Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, I didn't do my intro quite as successfully as I might have, because as you can see I have a book on my lap. <laughs> so as I said at the end of the last one, this one is going to be another read extract then talk about some related stuff. Um, I've chosen an extract, still not quite sure what I want to talk about. Um, I've gone for Echo, um, the often forgotten book. <laughs> I spend a lot of time talking about um, the Never Rating Collection, I think because that is such a massive project with all its spin-offs and everything else at the moment. Um, and obviously uh, the Dollmaker Sun books because they're part of what is going to be a larger series, the Shadows Shadows Beneath the Light series. Um, it's easy for me to kind of get caught up in talking about them because sequential books are easier in a lot of ways to, to talk about. Um, and obviously Echo is my, um, my solo baby. Um, my my standalone, um, so <laughs> unfortunately it does get neglected um, a little bit. And um, Echo just had a free book promotion, um, and it's probably my least successful free book promotion that I've had so far. Um, I'm not completely sure why that is. I know I wasn't doing as much posting and sharing around as I would normally, but it happened to be a particularly busy weekend for me at the start of it, um, as I was working both days, and then I think I was working like I, I was working most days throughout it. Um, so like a lot of the stuff that I would normally do behind the scenes in order to draw a little bit more attention towards it, I wasn't doing um, much to <laughs> much to my shame, um, and it just ended up being a much less successful uh, promotion free book promotion than I'm used to doing. Um, I mean, I, I do occasionally get fairly low ones, but it, it was it was one which was not as, as good as it sort of could have been. Um, so I think I just wanted to sort of spend some time talking about Echo. I may or may not read an extract at this point. We'll see how this goes. Um, I may just talk generally about Echo and why it's a great book and why people should actually give it a chance um, and give it a read. I mean, it's, I do sometimes describe it as being a bit of a hard sell. Um, the reason for this being is that it is set very much in a fantasy world. Uh, so it's an urban fantasy world. So it's sort of, I like to picture it as being sort of early 2000s-ish in terms of technology and stuff like that um it, like there's no sort of specific date given to like when it's set but like in terms of like the technology that that appears to be around i would say it was very much sort of set in that sort of 2000-ish um era um but there are no human Characters and I'm doing that because human does mean something very different in my multiverse um, to, to what most people would kind of standardly think of. Um, but basically, you're dealing with um, fairy tale creatures, like you know, you're, you're dealing with um, fairies and nymphs and imps and sprites and pixies and all of these kind of things. So there are no what would be recognised as humans um, by most people. In the book at all. So it is very much, in a lot of ways, a modern fairy tale. It, it's a modern tale with fairy creatures uh, very much front and centre because that's, that's all that is in there. But at the same time, it's not a fairy tale in the sense of what most people think of as being a fairy tale, um, even sort of like a modern fairy tale, because you do have that complete lack of a human element and a lot of fairy tales don't sort of that. I mean, some do, some don't. Like when you sort of think of a, a fairy tale, it's, you know, you're thinking of your prince and your princess and like magical stuff happening around them, um, opposed to necessarily focusing on uh, the, the sort of the fairy tale creatures themselves. I mean, like I said, it's not completely removed from that, but it, it is sort of that. So 
in this one sense, it's it's a modern fairy tale setting. It's it's a modern fairy tale reality, modern fairy tale world. Um, it's also a mystery, <laughs> and this is where like this is where it gets slightly harder to sell because the setting is a uh, sort of modern fairy tale, but the plot is very much a mystery. Um, there is a there is there are events that happen um, which set up the mystery. There are red herrings. Um, there are Mister X. Uh, some will catch people more than others will. Um, some will figure out what's going on faster than others will. Um, I've I've set it up not to be necessarily too complex a mystery because uh, there's also like elements of family drama going on and stuff like that. But like the main the main thing, the main element kind of carrying the plot along is this mystery, is this, you know, what's going on, who is, who's behind all of these weird acts, are they actually connected, are they just coincidence? Um, so you've got that going on, and as I said, you've got like these family drama elements going along, and some of the family drama elements are very much tied in to the mystery, um, and some of them are just to sort of help develop the characters, make you care about the characters and, and, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, you've got a mystery set in an urban fantasy world. Okay, that's a little bit of an unusual sell, um, especially when you're sort of like saying, yeah, the, the main character is, is a nymph. Um, and it's a, a nymph who wants to be an actor, who wants to perform on a stage, and like the thing that sort of sets the plot into motion um, is Echo going for her first audition. Um, so again, it, it's kind of like, okay, that, I think I'm just about following that. Um, you know, if, if you're talking about it in terms of just being a mystery, it'd be like, oh yeah, the, you know, the main character goes for an audition and like from the point of her first audition, weird things start happening, and then more weird things start happening, and uh, she starts to think maybe someone is after her, or um, something like you know something weird is going on, um, and all the, these incidents like keep happening, and then eventually you know she figures out yeah there is definitely somebody after her. Um, it's just trying to you know and who who is it and and the resolutions and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and that's that's fairly straightforward. And then you bring in the idea that you know, well, yeah, it's also set in an urban fantasy world, and the main character is nymph. Um, and some of these incidents that are going on happening um, are either prevented from becoming worse because of magic, or are potentially being caused by magic. Um, which again, it's sort of relatively straightforward um, when you sort of go into it. But it's a very hard idea to kind of sell because usually people are like, oh yeah, I want a fantasy, that's a fantasy, or I want a mystery, that's a mystery. And then it's weird trying to kind of sell this combination of ideas um, and like settings and, and stuff like that. Um, and then the main character is also disabled. Uh, she is a disabled woman. She is a disabled mother of two currently single um although she gets on quite well with her ex but again that sort of feeds into a lot of the family drama stuff that goes on and it's like at that point it's like okay <laughs> now we're reaching the territory of how do you how do you sell this book how do you market this book um who are you marketing this book too. I mean, I mean, I, obviously, I think most people can read this book and, and get on with it. I mean, it is primarily young adult, um, as I always aim for mature young adult as my primary um, audience and my primary market. Because um, you know, I'm I'm looking for not you know teens necessarily, but you know, sixteen, eighteen plus to however however old you want to still consider yourself a young adult. <laughs> it's all good. Um, but yeah, it, it's, you know, I, I know like the age demographic that I'm sort of aiming it to, but you, you get this sort of, I don't want to say it's like an issue, but it becomes a very odd sell 
when you're like, oh yeah, an another element of this book is this main character happens to be disabled. And um, that plays into the family drama stuff. It's potentially behind whatever mystery is going on um, and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, yeah, it is, it is kind of an element of the plot that is not completely irrelevant, even though I don't write the character to be, you know, she is a character first and a disabled character second. Um, and I, I think I've mentioned this before when I've, I've spoken a little bit about Echo and a little bit about the book. Um, I very much, you know, tackle my disabled characters with the idea of, is this something I would do with any other character? Yes, then absolutely. I'm going to do something along the same lines with this character as best I can. Because obviously you're, you're thinking about like situational things and like, um, a lot of it with Echo in particular is um, how does she get around? What you know, if this happens, what are the consequences of this? And um, is it? I know it sounds weird, but it's, it's remembering she's in a wheelchair. <laughs> I'm finding it a little bit. Um, uh, there is a character in um, I'm not going to say which series, but one of the books that I'm writing at the moment who only has one arm. Um, and I occasionally forget <laughs> and I have to go back and correct myself um, because, you know, it, it is, it's a different way of thinking about things. But at the same time, I don't want to say, oh, I'm not going to write that kind of plot for that kind of character. Um, I'm not going to write that kind of plot for a character with a disability. Um, because they have a disability. I'm, I'm going to go, no, I'm going to work out how I can write the plot for this character, bearing in mind that I have to think about X, Y, and Z when I'm when I'm writing this, for this character, because, you know, there, there are going to be certain environmental issues or certain mobility issues or certain things that they're not physically going to be able to do for whatever reason that you have to take into consideration when you're sort of writing a plot like this. I think one of the things that kind of makes the situation, I don't want to say more dangerous for Echo, but certainly makes um, a lot of the tension very, um, very much at like the front of, of like the situations, like a situation like that might not necessarily be as tense for somebody else, but is, is more um, intense for Echo because there is a, a limit to how much she can do if, like, say she's not in her wheelchair. Um, there's only so fast that she's going to be able to move or if um if she's harnessed up in something you know uh, she's not going to just be able to sort of you know unstrap herself in and get herself away from that situation um she you know there, there are extra steps in order for her to get out of the danger that she is in a lot of the time um so it does very much i think add to some of the tension of the situations that she is in um the fact that you know her, her mobility and her ability to get around is a little more limited than it would be for maybe another character in that situation. Having said that, you know, at the same time, if you're going through like all of these things and you're like, is something going on? Is somebody after me? It's going to be tense no matter, <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> like having some more limitation is just going to like add to some of the tension, but it's not necessarily you know going to. Um, going to create tension where there isn't any tension, you know, if, if you are worried about your safety, then, you know, it doesn't matter how um, able-bodied or whatever you are, it's going to be a stressful situation for you. Um, it's just, I, you know, I, I feel in like certain moments, then, yeah, it, it is, it's like one of those very, very situational things where you, you can feel just how, you know, difficult the situation is and, and just how much tenser the situation is because you, you don't have certain options that you might have had otherwise. Um, I mean, certainly towards the end of the book, so towards the climax of the book, um, I think a lot of that very much works better because you, you do have this situation where Echo is kind of forced to trust um, you know, to trust certain certain individuals and, and, and stuff like that 
because without them she's very very stuck um and you know she she does have to make these decisions she does have to um sort of i would i want to say decide where her loyalties are exactly but it is you know it is very much she has to sort of trust her instincts and trust what she knows about the people around her in order to survive um and to, to decide the best way to survive i mean um like the, the, the sort of the tagline the, the tagline is very much um choices can change everything and I think that is one of the sort of the very much key kind of themes and, and key kind of elements. It's not necessarily an overt thing throughout the book, but all the way through the book, you can feel how certain choices um, impact on on how the plot goes forward and impact on um, like how the characters develop and and. Um, and various things like that and sometimes it's like really subtle things that you don't necessarily think about um, maybe having that much significance and other times you know it, it's quite impactful things it's, it's things that uh, you, you kind of almost like take a step back and kind of go oh oh I, I never really you know thought about how that can have a long-term effect and that can have a long-term impact on things um i mean granted some of the choices are things that are completely out of the main character's control and have happened sort of prior to the story happening um but like all the like th there's no feeling of there ever being kind of a key choice but you definitely get like from very early on the feeling of this character is making choices and these are the consequences of the choices and it's not necessarily right and wrong um what she does and, and how how things sort of like unfold because of what she does um but it is very much a, a case of you can like there are certain moments where you can kind of go oh if she'd made a different decision at this point maybe it wouldn't have gone to here and it wouldn't have gone to here and it wouldn't have gone to here but if you don't make those choices then no, no, that's no story <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you have to make the bad choices for the story to happen um but yeah it, it, it is it's kind of a shame that it's such a hard sell because it's also such a an interesting book to talk about and it's in a lot of ways it's a really easy book to talk about but trying to like narrow it down to something that's going to like grab people's attention i mean it's all well and good sort of like sitting down and talking about a book for 20 minutes and talking about all the reasons why the book is exciting and you know putting into like clear thoughts and, and like connecting everything together but like when you're tweeting about a book you're trying to get across why this book is exciting in a very short amount of text um and that's not always the easiest thing to do and, and the same with like writing a blurb for a book you know there are certain amounts of information that you need to get across in that in that blurb um and you might not necessarily have the word space that you need in order to to get everything across because i think with echo in particular because that was originally published on lulu it had a very a very small word count compared to what you can get on kdp so the blurb as it as has been written is re relatively short um, but also relatively concise but at the same time you're trying to get across the idea that this is a fantasy and that this is a mystery and that the fact that the main character is disabled without saying all of those things in like this is what it is this is what it is this is what it is you know you're trying to get it across in an interesting way you're trying to get it across in a way that way like especially the disabled aspect i'm like i don't want to be like blatant in your face with it um because it's a part of who the character is it's not who the character is um it's trying to get across all of like these key elements and all of these key themes um in a way that sounds interesting that then turns it into a hard sell because you're having to introduce the idea as i said that this is a fantasy world with its own rules um that this is a mystery and there's a mystery that's going to un unravel and you want the setup for what the mystery is the the inciting incident as it were which is the going for the audition 
you want to get in hints at least that the main character is disabled and hints at some of the family drama because these are the elements that you know drive the plot forward and it can be a very hard sell because you know although like I said I can sit down here and I can talk about it for 20 minutes and I can get everything across and I can make it sound really easy and really simple and really straightforward to understand what it's then translating that into something that is is catching and that is grabbing and that you know people are going to go oh yeah I get what that's about I'm, I'm going to pick that up because that sounds really interesting um, so unfortunately Echo then becomes a very hard sell um, because there is a lot of details that you need to get across in order to grab someone's attention and it's trying to find a way of doing that um, it's not it's not the easiest thing in the world to do um, but I'm, I'm hoping that my enthusiasm for the book will kind of help a little bit here because it's a fantastic book. I mean, I know I'm the author, of course, I'm going to say that it's a fantastic book. Why would I not say that it's a fantastic book? Um, I mean, it's not the most complex mystery in the world. It's not supposed to be the most complex mystery in the world. It is a mystery slash fantasy slash family drama type story of all the elements kind of feed into each other. Um, the mystery is simply the thing that moves the plot forward. Um, more than anything else um and you know the likelihood is most people are probably going to figure it out before the, the end what, what's going on in the background they may not necessarily get all the motives um but they're probably going to figure out a lot of the details before they reach the end and that's fine that's not designed to be a complex mystery um it's, it's not necessarily a cozy mystery um, because <laughs> because there are definitely uh, some moments which kind of push it a little bit beyond that. Um, but in terms of you know, it's it's an interesting mystery. I I, I know I'm the one saying this myself, um, but certainly the reviews that this one have had is fairly positive about what it is. Um, some people seem to be able to work it out faster than other people um it yeah and it's it's one of those where you know you, you should check it out and if you haven't already you should definitely check it out it's i think worth the read um it deserves to do better than it does um as i said it's a little bit of a hard sell because there are so many different elements that you want to talk about when you talk about this book um that you want to get across to people like and, and trying to make that sound really exciting and cohesive and not just like it's a whole bunch of random stuff thrown together um so it's a it's a it's a harder sell than it should be it really is a harder sell than it should be but despite that it's worth it's worth checking out it is worth checking out um you know if nothing else then you know just as a curiosity as to what I write like when I write in third rather than in first person because most <laughs> almost everything else like, no everything else no almost everything else I say almost everything else because um because of the two books that are retired for revision those are also third person um and I kind of have to still count them because they, they do still show if you search for me um but yeah, no, it, it's it's me writing in third person rather than first person, which is what all my other main books are written in um, currently. I do do a lot of writing in first person. I quite like writing in first person. Uh, <laughs> certainly at the moment, I quite like writing in first person. Um, but yeah, I just think it is. It's it needs more attention. It deserves more attention it deserves you know somebody giving it a proper look and appreciating the fact that it is different it um it is something a bit different it uh it is not your everyday sort of mystery it's not your everyday sort of focus for characters um you don't very often have disabled characters front and foremost um in fantasy books i mean it is happening more and more 
um, you know, it's not like like it was once was where it wasn't something you really saw at all. That it is something that is becoming a bit more prevalent and is becoming a bit more out there. But it's still not something that happens anywhere near enough. Um, and it's just, especially when it's when it's a fantasy creature that has a disability. Um, I, I think that's something that you know, one of my reviews does actually point that out that it's not something that you see every day so it is not something that's all that common yet and it's uh as i said it's something a little bit different and it, it becomes part of the hard sell but <laughs> really this book should not be such a hard sell this book should not be such a hard sell it is a great book um and it is one i think where you know the, the mystery is not necessarily the most complex thing in the world but it's enough to keep i think to keep you you interested at least to sort of get to the resolution and find out how things all wrap up and and stuff like that so yeah um definitely if you haven't check out echo i think it, it's worth you know a little bit more attention when it does actually get it um it's definitely a book that's worth a second look i think um because you know it's not something that everybody is writing but it's probably something that most people don't realize that they kind of want um and that sounds really arrogant i'm sorry what i mean is is because of all the different elements that are, are coming together to sort of form this book, it feels to me like it's something that, you know, as I said, deserves a little bit more attention and deserves a little bit more notice than it currently gets. And I think it's worth three. But of course I do. I'm the author. I have to say that. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry that this one became a little bit babbly towards the end. Um, I'm not very cohesive uh, when it comes to like how I think about things a lot of the time. Uh, I'm just like random stream, ran random stream of thoughts. Um, anyway, I hope you found this one sort of interesting. I hope if you haven't actually checked out Echo yet that this has made you at least curious to um, go onto Amazon and read the preview because you can read the preview for, for free. Um, it's also available on Kindle and on Kindle Limited um, if you have Kindle Unlimited. So that's a nice free way for you to, to read it if you want. Obviously, it's also got a paperback version. Um, I'm going to demonstrate on this lovely paperback right here. Um, so, like the cover is beautiful. <laughs> like how can you look at this cover and not be like that's that's a, that's a good looking cover um i know but um, yeah, I, I know I've, I've, I've got to say that about my work <laughs> um yeah so i hope it's made you sort of curious uh to to check the book out i also i apologize that i'm being very sort of Bubbly, um about it, but I do think it deserves a little bit more attention than it than it does get. And you know, I'm I'm a little bit bad for neglecting it myself. So, <laughs> um, all right, okay. I heard over there. Hopefully, you found this one interesting. Hopefully, you're looking forward to seeing whatever it is I'm going to talk about next time. Um, I certainly have no idea at this point what I'm going to be talking about next time, but I um. Like, I'm less than an hour, well, just over an hour away from my first COVID jab, so potentially that's what I'll be talking about next time, like how I, how that went and, and stuff like that. So, who knows? I could change my mind and forget between now and then. I will be feel, filming this, that's going to be filming it next week after all. There we go. There it was. There it was. Okay. Um, well, with that said, I will see you next time. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!